All right, so for starters, let's just uh, let's just go back to that 1966 season, and can you recap what that season was like going into that Michigan State game? Well, you have to realize back then there was no ESPN, there was no sports talk shows. All you saw was about six minutes every night on the news. Then you saw your your daily newspaper. So it was a different world totally. And we were, you know, you can always say because Michigan State was such a rival, you know, you always keep your eye out and you know how's the other guy doing. And we were rolling around, rolling, cruising through the season, so were they. And we knew at about three weeks out, we finally got to the point where we're saying, hmm, this looks like a big, big game up in East Lansing. But Arrow was so great about deflecting any kind of pressure. Because, you know, we had a great team, but the only two guys that could possibly screw it up was myself and Seymour. We were the sophomores on the team. You know, the other guys are all seniors, and they've been there before. And uh, so, you know, Eric kept us grounded. And then we came in, and really, you know, I keep, everybody said it's such a big game, but it was really just another game. I mean, we, we took every game. We beat Duke 64 nothing, but we prepared for that game, the same game way we prepared for Michigan State. So you just kept a nice even keel throughout the season. And then kind of going up to that game, obviously more and more hype started to build. I mean, there were more. This drew more of a TV audience in a crowd than the first two Super Bowls. <laughs> so, it, just coming to, or talking about the hype that comes up to that game. What do you remember about that hype? Well, first of all, that was back in the archaic days when Michigan State couldn't go to two Rose Bowls in a row, and you couldn't have you couldn't be you had to be on national TV two times in a three-year period. It was absolutely absurd. But what they did is that that was actually a regional game. I don't know if you know that. They blacked out North Dakota. So they called that a regional game, a big region, but it was a regional game. So that's how they got around it. And, but it was, you know, it was, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be cold. Of course, we're used to that in South Bend. It's not a, you know, picnic area. So, but it, it was, uh, like I said, it, it wasn't different from any other game. You know, we studied the personnel, and the defense of Michigan State was phenomenal. And, you know, our defense was great. And our offense, you know, both of you had two teams that really never didn't have a weakness. So normally my offense is better than a little better than your defense. So I have an edge there, or vice versa, or whatever. But in that game, everybody was really equal. So it was going to come down to, you know, who made who made a mistake. Well, and it, it ended up being labeled the game of the century. Did it live up to that for you? I think everybody walked away. It was probably the weirdest feeling I've ever had after a game. Because I've never played in a tie in my life. And you walk, you don't, do I clap my hands? Do I yell? Do I cry? You don't know how to act. You know, Bubba's out there on the 50-yard line yelling, let's keep playing, let's keep playing. I go, well, I got my shoulder in, I'm not playing anything. But you just didn't know how to react. It was really a strange, strange feeling. Um, it, when you look at the talent, though, because the feeling part, I mean, that was one of the next questions. But when you look at the talent that got there on that field that day, how do you kind of, I guess sum that up all the talent that was on that field and both teams going at it well the talent if you look at it, I think I think Michigan State had four guys in the top 10 in the selection the top eight and it was just and we had you know Alan Page and Duranko and Jimmy Lynch play for Kansas I mean we had so many great players in the offense you know Paul Siler was the first round pick our left tackle Gedeke played for the Broncos you know played for Houston Oilers you know everybody went to the pros because they were that good, both sides of the ball. And it was uh, one of those things where it, you could put two lifetimes together. You may not have that. You may have a team, like one of the old Miami teams, who was probably maybe a little better than we were, but not two teams who played each other. That's the whole key. And it was, you know, it was great to be part of. And uh, we thanked Era until his death for, for us coming out with a tie, because if, if somebody would have won, Five years later, everybody's, oh, yeah, I remember that game. But now, it's every year you hear about the Michigan State 10-10 tie. And now it's been 51 years since that game. See, that's the thing. We had our reunion on the 50th anniversary. So Michigan State screwed up again. They had their 50th anniversary on the 51st year. Let's get it right here, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been 51 years. You get to meet some of the guys again from both Michigan State and Notre Dame. What's this weekend been like for you? They're, those guys are all really old. 
I'm the only one that kept my, you know, 18-year-old figure here. <laughs> but no, it, it's great to see everybody. And it's great because Bubba was a dear friend. Uh, 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 George Webster played his last year in the pros with me in Pittsburgh. Dear friend. And some of these guys are just really good people. And it's sorry to see them not here. And I would have loved to, you know, sparred with Bubba a little more. But it's, it's great to see everybody. I mean, because you didn't really... And everybody in football, you wear a mask. So you don't really get to see what they look like without that, with that helmet on. So now you can get, you know, put, the, put the name in the face with the old helmet. So how long has it been since you've seen some of these guys? 50 years. Or 51. <laughs> um, last question, and I'll, I'll let you get back there. Just both of these institutions have helped each other out in different ways throughout history. This is a unique rivalry. How would you kind of sum up what this rivalry is? Well, when we, when we went to the ACC for a certain amount of games, we have to play each year. And we had to cut down Purdue, we had to cut down Michigan State, we had to get, cut down Michigan. And the real complaint was about Michigan for some reason. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I was there in Notre Dame for four years, we didn't play Michigan. We didn't play Michigan 10 years prior to me getting there or 10 years after me leaving. So we played Michigan State every year. Where's the rival with Michigan? To us, it's Michigan State. You know, always when we, when we look at it, Southern Cal number one, Michigan State number two in our schedule, the way it is. But, and, but Michigan, it's a, it's a big game, but it's, never, it's not like what State is about. Thank you so much. That was terrific. Thank you.